But today we're back with skipper Chris Randall aboard the Chief. And I'm getting bit. You can see my line coming off my reel here. And what we're doing is we're offshore looking for yellowtail, maybe a tuna or two. We're chasing kelp patties, trying to find some fish. So I'm going to set the hook on this fish and get this day started. Here we go. Fresh one! I'm Dan Hernandez and I live to fish. That's a nice vermilion right there. Yeah, this is what fishing's like. I have been fishing along the Pacific coast my entire life. Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. First kelp patty of the day. We're about 90 miles south of San Diego. We're catching these school-sized yellowtail. They're uh, they're not really jumbo, but I tell you what, they're a lot of fun to catch, and they're really good eating. Number four. Number four. Our day's getting started. We're stopping another kelp patty. And what's unique about these kelp patties is they collect small bait fish, which gather up bigger fish, such as the yellowtail and the bluefin tuna. And these are free floating. They actually break off of islands and they float with the ocean currents all over the place. They're really hard to track, so we have to work really hard with the binoculars to try and find these things. But as you can see, as we find them, we're catching fish. So it's worth the hard effort. And uh, that's what all kelp patties all about. Yellowtail can be found in a wide range, as far north as British Columbia and down south into Chile. We usually find good numbers of them from Point Conception down into the Baja waters. They can grow up to 100 pounds, and then they feed on a variety of bait fish, including sardines, mackerel, and even like squids and shrimps too. They're one of the most popular game fish in all of California. So what we're doing today, where the chief is just hitting all these kelp patties, we got a little one here. So for about every five or six ones that we hit, one of them's loaded with fish. So, so far we're doing good. Probably got half limits already for everybody. And it's only about 11 o'clock in the morning. So what we're doing is just hitting these cow patties, lots of yellows, and we're trying to see if we can get some bluefin too. 
but we just keep looking for more and more patties. We're about 90 miles, 95 miles south of San Diego, just picking away at the fish. Hopefully we'll get some more. Another yellowtail. We're getting a mix of sizes. Some of these little guys, some really nice ones, some over 20 pounds. So it's just a mix. We're going to slide back up on this cow patty again, see if we can get us a couple more yellowtail. Well, let's take a little break from the action, go to the tackle box, give you a good look at the gear we're using for today's trip. Today in the Tackle Box, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing today. We're fishing offshore, hidden cow patties. You never know what to expect. Could be a tuna, could be a yellowtail. Right now, this time of year, lots of yellowtail in these cow patties. And what I like to do as we slide up on them is to throw a jig. There's lots of different jigs out there. What you want to make sure when you pick out a jig for this type of fishing is you get a jig that has a thin profile like this and it's kind of heavy. You want to cast it a long distance and that thin profile like that tells you it's designed to swim back really fast. So that's the one time you want to use a high speed reel is to make that jig dart right back to you as fast as possible and those yellows will come right up and hit it. You might be surprised, there might be a Dorado on it, might be a tuna on it. All those fish are very quick and they have no problem chasing down a metal jig like this. Another thing too is if you do go to bait like sardines, in this particular show, the fish get a little bit picky, a little bit touchy. So normally you'd fish a really large, maybe a 4 or 5 large bait, live bait hook when you're fishing for fish like this offshore. What you want to do when the fish get picky is downsize your hook. Drop down to a size 1 or 1-0 when you pick out your live bait hook and you'll be more successful. So that's what I would suggest. When you're looking at tackle to take out offshore, go with the metal jig first, but if you go with the sardine and people just aren't getting bit, downsize your line, downsize your hook, and you're gonna catch more fish. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. <laughs>
We just slept on another cow patty. Here's my fish right here on a jig. There's so many fish right here. There's so much action. I'm not even gonna bother with gaffs. And this is a school size yellow. What are we getting out here on the cow patties? Some bigger, some smaller. This is kind of average size for today. All right, well, let's take a little break from the action and go to the galley and show you how to cook up one of these fish that we're catching today aboard the Chief. This week in the galley, we're at Gladstone's in Long Beach, California. Standing next to me is Chef Pete. He's in charge of the kitchen here. He's been kind enough to do a cooking segment for us today. And Chef, what do you have in store for us? Oh, I've got a surprise for you. Actually, not a surprise. Taste of the Islands promotion. We've made an ahi club sandwich, which is absolutely outstanding and very easy to make. All right, cool. Well, how do we get started? Well, we get started, we've got this beautiful uh, tuna loin, ahi tuna loin. We're going to cut um, two slices out of it, nice and thin, because we're going to sear this meat uh, on the flat top so that it's still raw in the middle. Yeah. Basically, we want it to be the same size as a piece of bread. We've got uh, King's Hawaiian bread here. We're going to toast that up over here on this flat top. Meanwhile, we're going to take these two pieces of tuna, season them with a little salt and pepper. Like I said, we're going to brown this just on the outside, but still raw in the middle. Those are just going to sear real quick just for a few seconds. Boy, they're almost done. They are almost done. This is something <laughs> so easy to do at home. The secret to this dish is to have that tuna still, still raw. The, the way you'd like to eat it, like in a sushi bar. So on this one here, I've got some wasabi cream. Basically, it's just the wasabi that has been, um, um, the powder has been mixed into water, so it becomes like a paste. And then we add sour cream to it. You could use creme fraiche. You could use mayonnaise. We just choose to use the uh, sour cream. We're just going to build a simple sandwich here. Lettuce, tomato, and the tuna steak. A little cucumber. Thinly sliced cucumber. That's the secret to this dish right here. And a little daikon sprout. That goes there. And then we're going to repeat it again, just like this. Got the lettuce. Tomato. Like a triple decker? Like a triple decker, a club sandwich, ahi club sandwich. Got the cucumber. And we've got a little more daikon sprout. And now we've got to see how this one's going to sit on top. And there you have it, just like that. Here we go, we're going to cut this thing with a serrated knife. And the serrated knife is a really important factor with this. Important factor because you don't want to smash the bread when you're cutting it, which is what that knife right there would do. Some fresh uh, potato chips we make here every day at Gladstone's. And some fresh coleslaw right here on the side. And there you have it. This looks too good. I got to try this. <laughs> One of the benefits of my job. There Jeff. you go. That is really good. Looking at it, you can see it's more raw than it is cooked. Exactly. And that's the secret to the dish. It's really good. But thank you, Chef. It's always fun working with you. Thanks a for pleasure. having me. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Yes. This is more what we're looking for. A little bit larger grade yellowtail. 
still a spoolie sized fish, but we're getting bigger. Getting bigger. All right. Hey, Chris. What's your number? Uh, 11. All right. Drop my jig straight down. I got bit again. Let's see what I got here. Another yellow. I'm swimming under the boat. Here it comes. Here he is. Another yellow on the jig. Here we go. Two quick drops. Two quick drops, two quick fish. There we go. catching yellowtail. He kind of cheated and caught him in the nose, but basically the fish was diving at the jig. These work very well, medium to heavy irons, yo-yo, what we call them. And they work really good for, for grinding. You just do a fast wind, drop it back down, fast wind, and you can catch a lot of fish this way. So here's an alternate way to live bait, fish in the yo-yo iron, or of course, magic metals. We finally got our first jig strike of the day. Thank you very much. We're hoping it's a bluefin tuna, and he's uh, he's struggling a little bit, but uh, no, no, with no, no. it's a dorado. Oh well, see, I was wrong again. We'll take a dorado though. We've had straight yellowtail, school size yellows on numerous kelps. It's been decent fishing. Right now, we're on the hunt for big bluefin and dorado, and we got a dorado. Let's see if we can get this thing on the boat. Nice. 
Stay right there. Keep winding. Keep winding. Wind, 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 wind. Yes. Easy, easy. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Nice. Over the rail. Over the rail. All right. Here we go. Yeah, Get baby. That's it. Okay. Now you see these things that when they come on, they're very, very hot. You got to be careful with these things. They, they have a nickname for them. I can't say. But, uh, <laughs> This, this is on a very unique jig. This is a Alco. And you can see it, it's, it's similar to a, a short version of a Rapala. And this thing absolutely inhaled it. They work very well. It's a very nice fish. It's a very angry fish. Great eating. Also called Mahi Mahi. Congratulations. Thank you, buddy. Hey, it's your turn. First timer, too. That's it. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Beginner's yeah, luck. Beginner's All right. Luck. Yeah. All right, let's get the jig out of it. Did you know a male Dorado can be distinguished from a female by their brighter color, protruding forehead, or speed? That's right, protruding forehead. For this week's tip of the week, I want to talk to you a little bit how we call these yellows today. And the key was to fish lighter line. Normally on a tuna trip like this, you'd be fishing 40 and 50 pound test line, but most of the yellows caught today, we're taking on 25 and 30 pound test line. And that's this week's tip. When you get into these yellow tail, these smaller school fish, downsize your line, go 25, 30 pound test line, you'll catch a lot more fish. Well, I want to thank Chris Randall, Skipper of the Chief, and all the crew here aboard the Chief, they did a great job. I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing. And I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing.